Hey everybody, Ryan Carruthers here with your Future Stars Friday forecast on this Thursday. You're probably watching some playoff baseball, but if you can just take a little bit of your uh, time away and listen in, that'd be great because we have an exciting prospect who's heading to Future Stars Friday, and that is Sweet Melania. She won this Wednesday's uh, JP Chase uh, Morgan Jessamine. Uh, Jessamine, and that was at Keelan. It was the final win and you're in for the Future Stars Friday card, a mile and the 16th turf race, which points to the juvenile uh, turf, uh, juvenile Phillies turf. And, um, you know, it was really impressive. She did this for Todd Pletcher, Jose Ortiz was riding, and the ownership of Robert and Luana Lowe. And uh, she won by five and a half lengths, which is a record margin. And she did it in the second fastest time of the race's 29 year history. She did it in 143 and 13 one hundredths. And that was on good going. The horse who holds the record is uh, Solvig. And she won in one, uh, 142 and 21 one hundredths on firm ground. Uh, the buyer came back in 82. Now this filly, she debuted back in May. So that's pretty early in the season. Uh, and she debuted sprinting on dirt. She got third place uh, first time out. And then she put in another Shodo effort, running third again, cutting back in distance, still sprinting on dirt. It wasn't until she got onto the turf going a mile on the 16th that she got the maiden broken. That was at Saratoga in a maiden special weight. And what was interesting there is that uh, a length and a quarter back in second was Morning Gold. And Morning Gold, um, she was also in the Jessamine. She came sixth. Um, but in that maiden special weight in sixth that day was Miss Marissa. And Miss Marissa is a horse we talked about because she would later run second to eventual Darlie Alcibiades winner, British Idiom. And then off that, Miss Marissa went and she won a main special weight going a mile on the dirt at Belmont, got a 77 buyer. And then she tried the frisette and she, she tried to go up uh, with the pace and then she kind of you know, tried to sit just off it, but proved no match for your eventual winner of the frisette, Wicked Whisper. But back to Sweet Melania, she followed up her uh, main special weight score running in stakes competition in the PG Johnson. She kind of went wide and um, for a minute it looked like she was going to go into victory, but she got nailed by a neck by Cristal. And off that, Cristal went and she herself was second, three quarters of length back in the grade two Miss Grio. Uh, so there's plenty of reason to like Sweet Melania on form. And plenty to like going forward as well. Remember, the juvenile Phillies turf is a mile. The Jessamine, a mile and 16th. So she's going to be cutting back. But, you know, I based on what we saw from her on Wednesday, and in addition to faring well enough to pick up a paycheck in both dirt sprints, I, you know, I don't think that's going to be an issue at all. So let's talk about pedigree. This chestnut filly sold for $600,000 at last year's September Keeneland sale. That's as a yearling. And I got to tell you, even if she had never stepped hoof on a track, she was going to have potential as a broodmare because her female family has got a bit of a black type bonanza going on. Okay, so check it. Uh, she is by... American Pharaoh. Uh, of course, we all know what he did in making history back in 2015, and he upped that Triple Crown coronation by then setting a new precedent by winning the Breeders' Cup Classic. Of course, I mean, there might be some of you who are new to racing. Take in mind, the Breeders' Cup Classic's inaugural year was back in 1984, and the last Triple Crown champion we had prior to Pharaoh was in 1978. So, the Triple Crown winners of yesterday, just they had never had the opportunity to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic because it didn't exist. But still, that is setting a new precedent, um, and we call it the Grand Slam. It's, it's fun, and it's fitting with baseball playoffs going on right now. But uh, don't forget, also, Pharaoh was champion two-year-old Colt, so this is a horse who was already stellar as a juvenile, who went on to make history at three, and had he stayed in training, I think he would only continue to get better. He's, he seems like one of those throwback horses. And, you know, some people might think it's just um, 
fangirling, coloring the opinion, but I tell you it's not. This horse is, in my lifetime, the most efficient mover I've seen, and he's so beautifully conformed, the balance, the bone. I mean, some of these words might not mean a lot to, to um, more of the layman viewers, but for those of you who do recognize this, I'm, the forearm, forearm on him, the cannon bones, the gaskins, his, his, uh, his point of hip, just everything on this horse looked like, you know, a champion model. So it's not surprising that he would have such a beautiful way of going and that he would be able to accomplish what he did on track. So American Pharaoh, that is this filly's sire. And then mom was no slouch either. That is sweet and discreet. And sweet and discreet, she's by grade one cigar, cigar mile winner, uh, discreet cat. And it's worth noting that Discreet Cat himself is a half brother to Discreetly Mine, who won the Grade One uh, King's Bishop back in 2010. But back to Sweet and Discreet, again, this Philly's mom. Um, she won the Florida Sunshine Millions. She was second in the Grade Two Saban. And she's a full sister to Discreet Dancer. And Discreet Dancer, he won the Grade Two Gulfstream Park Handicap and was third in the Grade One Carter. She's also a half sister. To, so she's a full sister to Discreet Dancer, but then she's a half sister to uh, Traveling Man, and he won the grade two swale. What's interesting here is Todd, Todd Pletcher, he trained Discreetly Mind, Discreet Dancer, Traveling Man, and Sweet and Discreet. And you can get uh, a better insight into how to train a horse and how to get the best out of a horse when you have this familiarity with their family. So that's pretty cool right there. But what gets me really excited about the family from a pedigree standpoint is not only is Melania's grandmother a daughter of Gone West and her great grandmother a daughter of Danzig. And you know, when I say why I say that is because to go to those stallions, you had to have some black type in your family. You're not just going to Gone West, you're not just going to Danzig. Uh, but that makes sense because sweet Melania's great great grandmother is. Lassie's Lady, not Leslie's Lady, but Lassie's Lady. And uh, Lassie's Lady was by Aladar, and a half-sister to some mighty notable horses. Among them, multiple Group 1 winning sprinter Wolfhound. She's also a half to Charming Lassie, who's the dam of 2000's Eclipse champion older horse, Lemon Drop Kid. And she's also a half-sister to a horse named Weekend Surprise, a multiple grade three winner, multiple grade one place runner who is perhaps better known for being the dam of Summer Squall and Hall of Famer A.P. Indy, who won the Breeders' Cup Classic back in 1992. So how cool is that? If you follow me on Twitter, you know, I, I, I used just how interesting it is that Sweet Melania is by a horse bound for the Hall of Fame. He's not eligible yet because there's a time restriction before a horse can be uh, admitted into the Hall of Fame. But of course he's going to be inducted. There's no question. So you're by a Hall of Famer and who won the Breeders' Cup Classic at three years old. And then your family, your female family, includes a Hall of Famer who won the Breeders' Cup Classic at three years old. I. I love the symmetry there. It's, it's really neat. And that brings me to a fun story. Um, back in 2015, writer Michelle McDonald, and if you're out there, great, great piece on this. I, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, Michelle McDonald, she wrote this story about uh, this gentleman named Cecil Seaman. And what he does is measure the biomechanics of horses. He you know basically advises people on how efficiently a horse may be, you know, how efficient a horse may be on track in terms of movement and all that jazz. And so he takes measurements basically from head to tail, you know, and, and there are certain things he's looking for ratio wise. And he doesn't really, you know, go on to explain how he calculates it all, but he's got his method. And um, in any case, at the point of Michelle writing this article, he had already looked at over a hundred thousand horses over the course of his career doing this going back to 1969. And Pharaoh, he found after measuring him that he fits in with a very small, very select group of horses, what he considers to be A plus athletes. And 
you know, we're talking about horses the likes of Ghost Zapper and Shamar Dahl. And another horse who <laughs> Cecil thought that Pharaoh really reminded him of uh, in terms of how these proportions bared out, not necessarily in size and height, but again, in the proportions. And that horse was A.P. Indy. So how cool is that? I, I think that's fascinating. Um, but in any case, so that's the story on Sweet Melania. Again, the J.P. Morgan Chase Jessamyn was the final win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup. We have just weeks away. I mean, my heart's already pumping thinking about it. On Monday's show, I think what I'm going to do um, is kind of give a summary of some of the winners that we've seen that are uh, heading into Future Stars Friday. And then I am off to Keeneland. I'm so excited. I'm already thinking about all the burgoo and the bread pudding I'm going to eat and, of course, the Cracker Barrel. Oh, I love it. Sawmill gravy. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to be out there. I'm hoping, I don't know if there are going to be any more uh, Breeders' Cup bound horses still out there or if, or if they will have already shipped west. But if there are, I'm going to try to scope them out for you, see if we can do a little interview with one of the horses who have earned birth. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll do a farm visit or something. We'll see. I'll keep you apprised of that. So anyway, I'll let you get back to your playoff baseball. I'm root Not that you should care, but I'm rooting for the Astros, but for completely superficial reasons. Um, mainly, well, okay, my in-laws, they're in Texas. They, they're rooting for Houston. And then, come on, my guy, Justin Verlander. Hello, he was part of the Detroit Tigers, and I'm from Michigan. And of course, he's married to Kate Upton, who's a Breeders' Cup ambassador. So that's all good enough for me. <laughs> so I will see you back here on Monday with your Future Stars forecast. In the meantime, go Astros.